So, should you buy this prop? Hi guys, Adam from Mudos Panel Builders and I'm joined today by Henry from uh, Mudos Sky Sports. And uh, today's video we're going to be talking about the Duke Tiger propeller as well as the APR1 automatic control system that we've installed on 915 Mike Whiskey. Uh, we've got about 30 hours on this setup now with a lot of good flight testing and, and good data that we've been able to look at and compare speeds to the Airmaster that used to be on this aircraft. And so we're going to be presenting that to you guys in this video, talking about the installation, talking about different things that we've noticed with the propeller, and also uh, some different maintenance things uh, from Henry's side. Uh, so let's jump into it. Okay, so this is the Duke Tiger four-bladed prop. This one is the 1800 millimeter diameter, which is roughly 70.8 inches. Uh, in comparison, the Airmaster that came off of, off of this was a 72 inch diameter. Uh, the propeller is hydraulically driven, or hydraulically operated rather. And so there is a governor that sits on top of the uh, engine on the gear case back here. And our governor being the electronic control one means that the, there is a servo, an electronic servo that runs it, which is basically a replacement for the blue lever. That electronic servo that's on the governor is being controlled by the Flybox APR1 that we have mounted to our instrument panel. And we'll talk more about that later. We'll get up in the air and we'll show you how that works. So with the overview out of the way, I'll turn it over to Henry now and he'll talk to you guys about the installation of the prop and the maintenance and uh, what the implications are with this. So from a maintenance perspective, the Duke Tiger uh, prop was a very easy transition from the Airmaster that was currently on the TSI that we have. Um, in total, I think it was like a three and a half hour uh, transition process of removing the uh, Airmaster and putting the Duke on. So basically um, what we did is we removed the Airmaster. There's six bolts that attach it to the uh, crankshaft of the engine. And we used a 45 millimeter uh, spacer uh, for the TSI that uh, allows the proper gap and then basically we installed the hydraulic motor. We removed the, the plate off the back of the gearbox and added the hydraulic uh, governor there and then added the, uh, the box on the panel. And that box has the same profile as the Airmaster controller. So it, was, uh, it went right in the panel with no issues at all. Same bolt pattern and everything. From a maintenance perspective though, uh, it's a lot easier in my opinion uh, than the, the Airmaster because there's not a lot of grease or any grease on the, the propellers inside the hub. It's all spring actuated uh, using hydraulic pressure from the gearbox and the governor. Uh, so there's one O-ring that basically seals the prop off from the gearbox so oil doesn't transfer forward at all. So during maintenance and uh, inspections, it's a lot easier uh, to do. And it's basically for an inspection, you would just remove the spinner uh, and inspect the hub to make sure that there's no cracks or anything involved. and take the two halves and separate them, inspect them and put them back together. One thing to ensure when installing the uh, hydraulic governor is that you have a type three gearbox. In some instances, when you have a sling aircraft, there's gonna be a metal aluminum plate back there. You just wanna make sure that you can add the governor back there. And that's only on type three uh, Rotax gearboxes. So a couple things to add uh, before we close here is that the Duke, the Tiger, is uh, much lighter than the Airmaster. And from a maintenance perspective and longevity of the aircraft engine, it's way smoother during idle and during your run-ups and in flight. So at high RPMs, low RPMs, the Duke propeller really outperforms any uh, prop that I've had experience with. Okay, so with all that said, we're going to go ahead and uh, get in the aircraft, take it up in the air, and we'll show you how the, uh, the system operates, especially with the APR1, the automatic controller, and then we'll come back and we'll talk performance. All right, so we're in the air here with our uh, Duke Tiger propeller on the aircraft. And one of the big things that we wanted to test when we put this propeller onto the airplane is their automated single lever control system. So they use uh, it's a company called Flybox, and they have a device called the APR-1 uh, propeller controller. And what it does is it looks at the CAN bus data from the engine to grab RPM. And then it also hooks up pedostatic to grab airspeed. And what it will do is based on your current airspeed, it will set the propeller RPM for you. So for example, in this aircraft, uh, what I had, had set up is when you're taken off from the runway, obviously you need the full 5800 RPM on the Rotax. Uh, then what I did is when you're beyond VX, so between VX and VY, we have a ramp, uh, a curve if you will, that takes it down from 5800 to 5500 RPM and then 
Uh, after that, between uh, VY, so from, from VY up to 95 knots, so a 10 knot spread there, it stays at 5,500 RPM. And then as we increase airspeed from there, it will reduce down to 5,250 as our final cruising number. The way that it does it is we have a hydraulic governor on the engine. So this is a hydraulically actuated propeller. And this fly box is replacing the blue lever, essentially. So there's a little servo motor on the governor, and the fly box is just telling the servo motor where to go to hit that target RPM. So the governor is still doing the majority of the work, unlike the Airmaster, where the governor and the actuator are the same piece. Um, there's still a traditional hydraulic governor, but there's just no blue lever. That is the blue lever, so to speak. Um, it's actually, so I was pretty skeptic, to be honest, at first, about the whole idea of doing it based on airspeed. Um, in my opinion, though, once you get it dialed in the way that you want, the way that you fly the airplane, uh, it works great. So like I said, you know, with the way that we've got it for, you know, from VY to 10, pl or VY plus 10, having it at that 5,500 RPM max continuous, and then having it reduced from there, to me that seems to make sense, and uh, it works pretty well. the prop controller that as we were increasing speed on the takeoff roll, we uh, reduced our RPM accordingly. So it's a proportional change, it's like on a curve uh, with airspeed. So basically the way that we've got it set is beyond VX at 75 knots, we up to 85 knots, we will have a sliding scale down to 5500. Between 85 and 95, we stay at 5,500, and I'm actually about to level off right now. And you'll see, as I do so, as my airspeed starts to increase, that our target RPM is going to start decreasing there. And right now, I have the floor RPM on this thing set to 5,250. One benefit to this system over something like the RS Flight Systems SCU is that this still has a controller on the panel. Uh, and with the controller, you can actually go into manual control, completely bypass the electronics if something was going wrong, and have direct control over your propeller governor. Uh, so let's go ahead and take a look at that. Let me show you the controller here on the panel, show you what some of the screens look like and how it works. Okay, so we're at a nice cruise here at 75% power, and on the instrument you can see that we're at 118 knots indicated. Our target RPM is 5250. This is not your present RPM, this is your target RPM, and that's important to remember. This is not an engine instrument. Uh, matter of fact, it says target up in the top left there. Over here is the mode of operation. That is advanced mode, so that's the airspeed-based mode. On the left here, we have our constant speed and manual switch, so anybody that's used to the AirMaster would think of this as the auto manual switch. And then over on the right is a little toggle. We can actually adjust our RPM target, hitting that toggle. And you can see that we went into constant speed mode. And if we go back to 5250, constant speed mode when it's flashing like that means that it's temporary. So when our airspeed changes, I think it's 10 knots, then it will revert back to advanced mode. So an example I could see doing this is if you're climbing at VY, at least in my profile, but you still want the full 5,800 RPM, like you're avoiding an obstacle, you can get it right up to 5,800 RPM target at your current airspeed. It'll stay in constant speed mode, and then when you start to level off, it'll revert back to advanced mode. Something that I can't tell if it's gonna show up in the video or not, but there is a knob down here, and it does, with this mode anyways, the same thing as this switch does. So I could spin it and select my RPM. So if I just wanted a quick 5,800 RPM, I could just turn it over real fast. If we push and hold, this is our main menu. So this is just the dimmer. There is a little photo cell over here, so that'll dim at nighttime. We have our setup menu in here. We can set it permanently between constant speed and advanced mode. The home page for normal, they have a few different home pages. So this one, this IAS tab, if we go back, 
you can see that we can actually look at our curve for the airspeed versus RPM. We have, uh, these are the low RPM and high RPM settings, and then there's also a GPS set up for data logging in here, which we do not have hooked up at this time. So a pretty uh, advanced little instrument for what it is. Another thing in here, this is this backup and restore. We actually ended up putting a USB port on the panel in the location that the old AirMaster fine course switch was at. And so what we can do is if we want to update configurations on this, uh, we just plug into here with a flash drive and then we can back up the configuration to the flash drive and then when it gets modified, we can restore it back into the instrument. Uh, if you didn't have this on the panel, you would just simply have a dongle hanging behind and uh, yeah, I would just recommend putting it somewhere that you can access it uh, with your hands. Okay, so now that uh, we've talked about the APR-1 and you can see a little bit of how it works in flight, uh, once we get back on the ground, we'll talk about the Duke Tiger propeller that uh, we put on this aircraft, what it's done for us for performance, and uh, how we like it. Okay, so now we're back from our flight and you can see how the APR-1 system works and maybe you can tell how smooth the prop is. Probably doesn't translate very well on video, you'd have to fly with it, but take my word for it this is a very smooth running propeller and we haven't even dynamically balanced it there's a possibility we could get even better but I'm not sure how much better that could be so now with all that being uh, said and up to this point let's talk performance numbers now Duke has two kind of main propellers that they're recommending on Rotax equipped aircraft particularly in the sling world anyways and that is this Tiger and then also the flash black 3 uh, according to Duke the Tiger should be better for cruising speeds and the Flash should be better for takeoff performance, which when you look at the blade profiles between the two of them, you can kind of understand why. Um, our experience has been that the cruising speed with the Tiger is really not any different than it was with the Air Master. And the reason for that is because we believe that this airframe is the limiting factor on cruise speed not the efficiency of the propeller or the horsepower. Uh, as you, most of you should know, the amount of power that it takes to go an extra knot of airspeed is, is a exponential curve as you get faster. So we're kind of at the point where it takes so much more thrust to gain a knot that changing propellers isn't really doing anything for us, at least not at normal cruising uh, power settings. What I did find is that at similar density altitudes, at 50% power, we gained an extra five knots of true airspeed. So there's definitely an efficiency increase and we can measure it down low, but once you get above uh, those speeds, the, the airframe just stops you from realizing really that much benefit. Um, technically speaking, you should see a little bit more fuel efficiency, but uh, the way I fly this plane, I just set 75% power and I just leave it, I don't really touch it. Other numbers to consider, takeoff performance. Uh, it's kind of hard to do a scientific test with takeoff performance and try to make all things equal because wind is obviously not a static thing. And uh, when we're doing this at different times, we can't really do that. But what I can tell you is looking at G3X data logs and looking at similar loading of the aircraft between fuel and passengers, so weight, uh, what I've been able to determine is that with this propeller versus the Airmaster, we're getting off the ground about five seconds faster, and we appear to have a rough average of 150 foot per minute improved climb rate. Obviously, that's going to be variable depending on headwinds and things like that, uh, but I've been able to demonstrate in every single takeoff that I've looked at, and I've pulled 10 different flights, uh, that this is definitely getting off the ground faster than it was with the Air Master. So take that with a heavy grain of salt. Again, it's not very scientific, but it's enough for me to say yes, there is an improvement. Um, what we are planning to do is we want to put the f uh, flash blades on here, which are interchangeable, and then we want to look at the takeoff performance with that versus the Tiger, and then also kind of look at the cruising air speeds because uh, the theory right now is that the cruising performance between this and the flash should be the same, but if the flash gets you off the ground faster, that may be the better option for most people. But you can't deny the ramp appeal of the Tiger as well. And the flash also has a slightly larger diameter, so uh, that may change the dynamics a little bit. 
Now, one uh, point I do want to make, this aircraft is equipped with the 915 engine. Um, a lot of people in the Sling TSIs are going up to the 916 now. In theory, at cruise, it shouldn't make a difference because the cruising horsepower is, is only two uh, higher on the 916. Obviously, your takeoff performance is going to be much greater, so bear that in mind. Um, but this Tiger is on a 915 in our case, which allowed us to do a more direct comparison with the Airmaster because right now the Airmaster is only available on the 915 and the slings. And that's really the, the comparison point that we were interested in. So, should you buy this prop? If you're doing, if you're building your airplane right now and you need to buy a propeller for your airplane, yes, you should buy this prop. I love it. Uh, Henry likes it. Um, there's no denying the benefits. It's a little bit more expensive, particularly the Tiger, than the Airmaster, especially with the automated controller. Um, the Flash is a little bit less expensive, and if you just go for a traditional blue lever, you can save uh, even some more money there. And uh, in that case, you would actually be almost on parity with an Airmaster. Um, but in any case, I would have no problem purchasing or recommending this propeller for a new build. Would I recommend you retrofit your aircraft that already has an Airmaster? Probably not. I don't think that there's enough benefit to spend that kind of money. Um, maybe if you had a prop strike or something and you needed a new one anyways, then sure, go for it. But if you're just thinking, you know, what can I do to my airplane to make it better? I don't think it's worth retrofitting from an Airmaster. I would do other things first. Now, another comparison point that we're trying to make is between this propeller and the MT propeller. Um, you really can't compare them very well only because the MT, you know, it's a three-bladed prop. I think that compares more to the Airmaster in a lot of ways in, in design and profile. Uh, but the MT prop with the RS Flight Systems SCU is another option of single lever control. Uh, this is going to get into the weeds of opinion a little bit, but I'm slightly a control freak. So I like the idea that I have a controller on the panel that I can tell it what to do if I want to. And obviously having a manual switch and having reversionary modes is more beneficial. Whereas with the SCU, that's behind the panel. You have no control over it. As long as it has power, it's gonna be doing its own thing. So the downside to that is now, if something were to go wrong, uh, what you're at the mercy of is the, the fail safe, which is the governor is going to go into all the way course. So you're going to be at a lower RPM. You're going to have less horsepower available to you. That's their fail safe. Um, that's not the case here. So I like this system better for that reason. Now this system is dependent on airspeed, which somebody might see that as a negative because now you have to tie into your pedostatic plumbing. Personally, I don't think that's that big of a deal but I could see where somebody would have reservations about that. So you'll have to kind of think about that and, and, and make your own conclusions there. But again, I would have no problem recommending this setup as it sits to somebody that's looking for a propeller for their aircraft. So with all that being said, we hope you enjoyed this video. We hope that you found this information useful to you and uh, hopefully it helps you make a decision into what you're gonna do for your airplane. If you have questions about the setup on our aircraft, if there's anything you want to know about how it operates, maybe you want to see a certain thing tested and, and what it does, let us know. We'd be happy to, to do so. We're always looking for new ways to test out this airplane and, and get performance numbers. Uh, in addition, this aircraft, 915 Mike Whiskey, uh, has a load on it, so you're able to get transition training now in this airplane. Or if you just want to simply come out for a demo flight and figure out how the system works, how it flies, or the rest of the sling for that matter. If you've never flown a TSI, uh, you're welcome to get a hold of us at Midwest Panel Builders or Henry at Midwest Sky Sports, and uh, we'd be happy to help you out. Thanks for watching everybody, and we'll see you next time.